Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is The Piracy Show. Now, today's show is about time. The thing that you always think that you have more than enough of until you have none. You know, it's in a way it's something that you can measure, but it's also something that's an intangible because time passes differently at different times you know when you're doing something you enjoy time goes really fast when you're doing something you hate time stretches on into infinity so unless you're constantly monitoring a stopwatch you know time seems to shift now when you kind of think about piracy like here we are we're traveling between yella and our corp so basically crusader and our corp Let's say that, um, you know, in the current state of Star Citizen, when you're flying this ship and you're going from one destination to another, it feels that like, like the time just stretches on into infinity. It's very boring, you know, and that's partly because I think that as you know, CIG kind of, I think they kind of goofed a bit on the implementation of quantum drive. Like when they had the overheat mechanic, you know, I, I never said, you know, I never wanted them to com basically completely eliminate the overheat mechanic. What I wanted them to do is kind of squeeze in some gameplay into managing your ship systems in such a way as to prevent your engines from overheating, giving you something to do while you're traveling across a star system. You know, make some kind of engaging gameplay that goes along with quantum. But the reason why I'm bringing up the map here is because you're now going to see me traveling across the you know basically across the solar system and really when it's boring when there's nothing going on it seems to take forever but realistically it's not taking all that much time i mean think about it we're only two minutes into this trip two minutes have passed that's not a lot of time if you were to think about let's say you were out pirating somebody if they are able to send out an SOS, and it is entirely likely, and it's not something that I would protest against, that people should be able to send out an SOS and create a quantum beacon saying, I'm here, I'm being attacked, I need help. Think about how quickly those reinforcements could start showing up. Think about how long it would take you to capture that ship, snare it, crack open that hull, get out the cargo, and get gone before reinforcements show up and basically kick your ass. The truth is, is that two minutes is not a lot of time. And here we are, we are now crossing the three minute mark. That's not a lot of time to work with to do what you want to do. So if you're kind of going out and you're going like, hey, I just want to go out and I want to have fun. I want to be a pirate and, you know, I want to you know get my adrenaline up. Yeah, I'll have have some thrills. That may not be the best plan, and that may not be the best starting point. And you might find that some other pirates are maybe a little bit reluctant to join in with that kind of fun because they already know that you're kind of engaged in a losing proposition. You're kind of setting yourself up for failure. They don't want to kind of kick you. They don't want to kind of knock you around and say, like, what are you doing? But, you know maybe yours is more of a tactile kinesthetic learning style and you got to kind of do it on your own to kind of figure it out but time is always your enemy now if you were to go out and say okay i know this this is you know i know that this is a limiting factor this is a constant threat looming over my head whenever i go out and i engage in piracy so here's my plan here's how i plan to ensnare that ship Here's how I plan to crack open that hull in record time, get the cargo, get out, and disappear before any reinforcements can show up. This is my plan. This is how I'm going to do it. Bang, 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 bang. You might find that there's more pirates who are willing to go along with you on that journey because they're like, oh, okay, this person plans to win. Whereas the person is like, eh, well, you know, let's just kind of go out and, and, and see and find whatever we can find is probably not going to be all that enticing of an offer of, you know, you know, like, hey, do you want to come play with us? It's like, mm, maybe not. I've got some other stuff I got to do. Uh, have fun. Because you know that they're kind of setting themselves up in a way. And 
you, maybe you don't want to join in with that. Now I'm putting the image of the Corsair down here on the bottom of the map. I don't want to obscure the map because, you know, I want you guys thinking about time. Time is a critical factor when you're doing these things. Why am I such a huge fan of the Corsair? There's a lot of people out there, certainly when, you know, I made that little remark at the end of Friday's video and people were like, yeah, the Corsair. And some people were like, yeah, I love that ship. It looks so sexy. What, you know, but why, why am I such a huge fan of the Corsair? The sexiness of the ship is incidental. The reason why I'm such a huge fan of the Corsair is because it's a quick ship. It's got good sensors, apparently, and it packs a hefty load of firepower. That's an, I, in a, in an ideal situation when you want to disable a ship, whether it's with distortion weapons or whether it's just simply shooting the engines off of someone's ship. Two or three of those ships working together as a team in a coordinated way are going to be able to disable a larger cargo ship pretty damn quickly, especially if that ship is caught out on its own. Now, there's another ship that I'm also a big fan of. The Caterpillar. Is it because of, you know, it's got a, an asymmetrical design? Is it because it's got a, you know, a sexy, you know, pirate paint job? No. It's because it has big cargo bay doors on the side of it that allow for fast loading and off, you know, loading and offloading. And it's got tractor beams strategically placed on either side of the ship that allow you to kind of like, boom, boom, boom get the cargo really fast. When I'm thinking of a pirate operation, I see these two things working together in concert and I'm like, okay, that makes sense when we think of the problem of time. Can I disable a ship really quickly with a group of Corsairs and then bring in you know, a Caterpillar with those tractor beams and start taking all that heavy cargo as quickly as I can and then get out before reinforcements show up? Chances are that's a decent situation. Some people say, Oh, well, you know, I want a pirate and a buccaneer and da 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 da. Mm, maybe not such a great idea because you want to make money. I mean, you're not just looking to put a notch on your belt for all the people you shoot down. Some people may be, that's their thing. But if you're a pirate, then you're in it for the profit. You're in it for the money. You know, that's why you're doing this thing. And uh, the thrills just kind of come along with the territory, but realistically, you're doing it to make money, to advance your character. Understand that we are not really fully feeling the weight of the the anti-criminal systems that are going to exist in Star Citizen. You know, and this is often something that I kind of chastise people about when they're going like, oh my God, piracy is taking over Star Citizen, you know, re. And I'm just like, okay, settle down champ because one we don't have the reputation system we've only we're only barely starting to get the consequences of criminal activity which is like it's no longer like ooh, i've got crime stat how do i reset it it's oh i'm going to jail now and i've now i've got to figure out a way out of there there's some very real penalties that are going to come smashing down on people's heads soon and we're going to start to see you know this is going to start to sift away the detritus in the pirate community, we're going to start to see like, you know, what being kind of like a fly by the seat of your pants pilot gets you. And it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be success. You're going to have to start thinking in terms of teamwork, in terms of strategy and tactics in order to succeed. Because even if you can remove crime stat, you may not be able to remove negative reputations all that easily. So you may find that there's a significant portion of the game that is gated behind reputations that you are kind of, you know, you're burning these bridges. So if you're going to be a pirate, you might as well plan to succeed at piracy, you know, and not just go like, oh, well, I've got a ship. I got guns. Let's see what happens, because that's not all that inviting of a proposition. And that's not probably going to be a pirate crew that too many people are going to be too eager to join because they're going to be like, eh. I don't know, dude. I mean, there's going to be a lot of costs that go along with this activity. Maybe I want to succeed at it. You know, maybe that if that's not too much to ask. And so they may look at kind of like, hey, let's go out and shoot some people and say, mm, no, no, I think I'm going to wait until there's a plan, you know. Now, just as I've kind of outlined, you know, when people are freaking out about going like, oh, you know, there's not enough penalties for piracy, but there in fact is, you know, on the same, on the same side of things, on the pirate side, there is an 
equally huge blind spot that a lot of players are are not really contending with or not really managing not really figuring out i think would be the best way to say it um they don't really understand what they're seeing in the star citizen universe they're, they're they they look at what they see and they go oh this is the way it is like for instance once again here we are we're delivering life cure med sticks to the orphanage and we're getting seven thousand and change uec for it why are we getting so much for just a package of med sticks it doesn't make sense because maybe this is some kind of catalyst that they use to make the drugs. So they're paying 7,000 for one box of med sticks. That's probably going to make an enormous amount of money's worth of neon or widow or whatever in the star citizen universe. So when we get to a point in the star citizen universe where cargo ships are a thing where NPC cargo ships are traveling around the universe, those cargos are probably going to be worth a very large amount of money. Certainly if you're out there and you're participating in the trading game, which is very risky because if you get 30 k you can lose everything. But you know how much a cargo can be worth, especially if it's a more expensive item. Piracy comes with the potential of very great rewards, but it also comes at a very great cost. So if you're going out there and you're saying, well, I'm going to pirate in my buccaneer, good luck because you're not going to be able to carry much and all you're going to be able to do is kind of shoot things you may be able to support a pirate op but doing it on your own in a buccaneer not that great you have to move up to say like a cutlass or something like that but even then with this kind of unfortunate reality now pressing in on you all the different things that can kind of come out and try to get you you know, reinforcements are not all that far away. You have to start thinking about things like tactics. You have to start thinking about, you know, being smart about things. So, you know, it's, yeah, going out and just hopping into a video game saying, oh, let's just have some fun. Let's, you know, shoot it up. Yeah, it can be interesting. But the truth is, is that realistically, like you are moving into a game where, it's not just like, oh, I can rebuild in two minutes. Like there are going to be real consequences that you're going to have to face. So you're going to have to plan for success. And this kind of fly by the seat of your pants thing is probably going to be eliminated very quickly with the prisons and with the other penalties. And we don't know when cargo ships are going to, you know, turn up in the game. We don't know when we're going to get tractor beams and things like that. We do have interdiction, but... Eh, I think that CIG is going to kind of uh, revise how inter how uh, interdiction works because clearly, well, it doesn't. Um, but we are going to be moving into a period where we are going to start shaking out a lot of people who thought piracy was just going to be fun and thrills and who are now going to realize, oh, it's a business and I have to be smart about how I do it. It's something to think about. Anyways, that's the show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.